So you got your first bed of fish, but there's like a million types of food to choose from. Which is the best? Keep watching as I cover my top favorite foods to keep a bed of fish happy and healthy. Hi, this is A Gamer's Wife here with practical and proven tips to help fish enthusiasts like you. And for my first couple of betta fish I owned, I just bought a random jar of betta flakes and fed them the same thing for their entire lives. Poor things! Then I found out from the internet that there were all sorts of goodies that, well, a responsible owner should be feeding their betta fish. <laughs> so I started buying and trying everything because nothing's too good for my baby, right? Seriously, I think my fish eat way healthier than I do. <laughs> Anyway, to save you some time and money and refrigerator space, let me share with you some yummy, nutritious foods that my betta fish aren't able to resist. Comment below to share your suggestions as well. All right, first off, what in the world do these critters eat in the wild? Well, they're mainly insectivores that'll eat any old bug that falls into the water, as well as zooplankton, crustaceans, etc. So in the aquarium world, that means they mostly prefer protein-rich, small-sized floating foods. Their mouths are scooped upwards and shaped for eating off the surface of the water. And yes, they will spit out their food if the pieces are too big. That's not to say they won't go after your catfish's sinking algae wafers, because some bettas are like tiny goldfish. They'll just inhale anything vaguely digestible. <laughs> For me, I believe that variety is key. There's no one magical food that contains all the nutrients and minerals a fish needs. However, some betta fish are very picky and may not take to new foods unless you mix them together with their favorite snack and or if you just don't feed them for a few days so they get hungry enough to try something else. Just remember that as you try out some of these new foods I'm about to mention, make sure to remove any uneaten foods after about, I don't know, 15 minutes to an hour so that they don't rot and make the water all toxic, which could be potentially lethal to your betta fish. Also, you want to avoid any messy or microscopic foods. If your betta fish is like mine and cannot bear the thought of having any roommates or cleanup crew, I tend to stay away from certain flake foods, definitely powder foods that are intended for fish fry, and rapashi gel food. Many times these messy foods will get into the substrate and foul up the water faster because your betta can't find it or reach it. Okay, time for my list of favorites. First off, let's talk about prepared foods. Sure, they're not exactly the most natural looking choice, but they're like an all-in-one breakfast smoothie that contains lots of protein and essential vitamins. Floating betta pellets are my favorite because they're very clean, float at the top of the water for easy access, and are great for measuring out exactly how much you want to feed in case you have to leave instructions for a pet sitter. Some people like to pre-soak the pellets to avoid causing bloat in their betta fish, but I usually don't bother. A few high quality brands that are popular right now include Hikari, Ocean Nutrition, Northfin, and New Life Spectrum. For smaller and younger bettas, try Hikari pellets because they're very tiny in comparison to these Ocean Nutrition pellets I also have. I personally don't uphold to any strict rules like only feed X number of pellets per day because, as you just saw, pellets can really range in size, and bettas also vary in size and activity level. Stick around to the end of my video to find out my guideline for figuring out how much and how often to feed my betta fish. Another prepared food I've tried is Fluval Bug Bites. I like the concept because they're made out of black soldier fly larvae, which is perfect for our little insectivores. Unfortunately, the granules are tiny and sink fairly quickly, which is not ideal for most betta fish, but that doesn't deter my very food-motivated betta named Soundwave. It's kind of like enrichment for him to hunt for every single morsel he can find. So maybe there's another brand of insect-based floating foods that someone out there can let me know about. Quick note on prepared foods, don't let them expire. It could really get your fish sick, and honestly, some people say that the foods are the freshest and most nutritious within the first month to maybe six months of unpackaging them. That's why I keep mine in the refrigerator and I label them with the date they were opened. Next up is freeze-dried foods. Very similar to prepared foods in that they're dry, come in a jar usually, and last a long time. But the difference is that these are whole foods that are processed a lot less, and they're generally free from bacteria and parasites, unlike certain live foods. I've only bought freeze-dried bloodworms so far, and fish go crazy for them. They float, which is great, and they're like a tasty treat to feed once a week or so. 
Other freeze-dried options include tube effects worms, brine shrimp, daphnia, really anything that's small enough to fit in their mouths. Just be careful that the smaller, crumbly pieces don't get the water too dirty. I really love the next category, frozen foods. They're like my second favorite thing to feed fish and would be closer to number one if they could be easily purchased online and didn't go bad so quickly once you thaw them. They usually come in frozen cubes or sheets, but for me, one cube is way too much food for one feeding, unless you have other fish to feed. So I prefer the frozen sheets so that I can break off smaller pieces. I like to thaw them out in a small plastic container with a lid, use a baby spoon to drain out any excess liquid and feed a few worms, and then refrigerate the rest for the next few days. Make sure not to refreeze anything because the food will have bacterial growth on it. Ew. Also, don't accidentally leave this stuff out on the counter because it'll stink to high heaven. My favorites are frozen bloodworms, brine shrimp, and daphnia. There's also a special brine shrimp that's been fed spirulina algae, which kind of sounds like a good preventative measure against bloat or constipation, because it's similar to how people often recommend feeding a cooked shelled pea to help get a fish's digestive system moving again. And then we have live foods. This should be the perfect choice, right? It's the closest thing to what a betta splendens would eat in the wild and provides excellent enrichment. So why don't I feed them as often? Well, two reasons. They might be carrying diseases and they're a hassle to maintain. But there are plenty of people who swear by them, especially for conditioning a breeding pair or raising baby fry. So let's discuss. Common suggestions I've heard include live blackworms, microworms that you can culture, flightless fruit flies, and even pinhead crickets. Personally though, I've only fed live baby brine shrimp because I happen to be raising some baby honey gouramis, and even though they're practically microscopic, they swim in these irresistible jerky movements and are great enrichment. My betta fish somehow caught every single one, even though they're itty bitty. I've also tossed a few shrimp coals in the betta tank. Yeah, I know, I know, that might be a little unpalatable for some people, but I knew they were disease-free, I didn't want them breeding anymore, and Soundwave had a good old time chasing them down. However, you'll be happy to know that in his old age, he's mellowed out a lot and has decided to graciously spare them, for now. Okay, let's talk about a very popular question I get. How much and how often should I feed my betta fish, especially with all these different kinds of foods? Seriously, it's really easy to overfeed betta fish in captivity because they always act hungry and beg for food like the little adorable water puppies they are. <clears throat> so I have multiple aquariums to feed as well as multiple humans in my family to cook for. So I only got time to feed Soundwave once a day, six days a week. Some people believe that fasting one day a week can prevent bloating. So I'm like, sure, Sundays are a day of rest. In fact, adult betta fish can go for a week or so without food, so no need to get that pet sitter if you're just going to be gone for the weekend. Now, I don't like to go by the, quote, feed as much as they can eat in two minutes rule, because my betta can gorge himself to death in that amount of time. So when I first got them, I started off feeding like four pellets a day for a week, and then increased to five pellets a day the next week, and then six pellets the next. You see the pattern here? If my betta started getting a little on the hefty side, where his abdomen wasn't a smooth slope, but rather protruded like a pregnant belly, then I backed off by one pellet each week until he reached a healthy weight. Or you can just skip a feeding or two to help rebalance him a little faster. This system works with frozen or freeze-dried foods as well, because you can start guesstimating about how much volume his daily portion should be. And again, if he starts getting rotund, just cut back on the amount and you should see immediate results. Now, if you have the opposite problem where he's not eating at all, he may be sick. So take a closer look at his environment, check out any symptoms, and maybe get rid of some expired food. <laughs> If you have more questions about betta fish care, I may have the perfect video about it in this playlist. Otherwise, comment below to suggest the next betta tutorial I should cover. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video.